I really hope you enjoy the art tour this morning. This is one of the lovely parts of the front entry before we even get into the gardens. Just this massive display of cactuses. And what, what are they? They are garvies and these euphorbias. I always wanted to plant those in my front yard to stop people taking shortcuts. Okay, so this is the front entrance of the uh, garden centre with these beautiful sculpted, almost like uh, Dr. Zeusian trees in the front. The first two pieces that we see here are actually part of the permanent display. They're really fun when you're coming along with your kids. This garden centre was a place that we always used to stop off at on the way to, on the way to Grandma's house. And we've got the big apple and the old ute. So there's the old ute. So we're going to walk into the garden centre through the cafe, which is around here, through the gift shop. So we're going to go have a quick glimpse at the garden centre itself, but I will, as I said, I will come back to that if we get time at the end. Look at this. It's fabulous. Okay, so the first piece is on the tour. They're just on the other side of the cafe. Excuse me while I duck in here. It's a lovely cafe. It's got a water feature in the middle. All right, so that's the first piece in the trail. It's obviously a crafter's piece, someone who loves working with textiles. I can see French knitting, I can see crocheting, I can see patchworked hexagonal pieces. And the colour just looks like it would get lost in a garden, doesn't it? And I'd love to see the old chair underneath, wouldn't you? Crocheted hexagons, yes. Okay, that's the second piece on the trail. The third piece is right behind me and it's called Disintegration. I love the story behind this one. We're going to go from top to bottom. So basically the story behind this, the artist has donated this piece to the Cancer Council. And the reason it's called Disintegration is because it can be sold off in pieces, so it's designed to gradually deteriorate as people buy either individual leaves or whole strands. So over time, this exhibition goes right through till April, over time we should logically see less and less of this piece. It looks like it could even be um, handmade paper, perhaps. But the pieces on the floor, as you can see, are all loose. They cost $10 each. And the whole strands, I think, are $95. So that's the artist's name, Pat Land. We've got some raised flower beds here with vegetables and herbs growing in them. This gate did leads down to a children's playground, which is uh, separate from the rest of the gardens. I'm going to try and do this. It's described as a musical representation of the galaxy, I believe. Let's give it a go and see what happens. All right, I'm turning a handle. Understand this is for children. And it looks like some of the prongs might have been moved out of place. So perhaps it's not working as well as it should be. I like the idea of it though. All right, so we're going to walk out across the um, elevated walkway and I'll be looking left and right as we go. These are obviously display gardens for landscapers or for people who are wanting ideas for setting up their own gardens at home. We have various landscapes here. They've designed it in such a way that you can have ideas for winter, ideas for spring, for the seasons. These are magnificent big magnolias here on my right. 
and then over on the left we have a bunch of palm trees and we start to see some glimpses of some of the art pieces down in the garden we'll be getting down amongst it we've got hedges and walls elevated planters down here on my left Here's a glimpse of one of the art pieces. We're going to get down closer to that in a little while. That stepped area is um, called the amphitheater and the owners of the property hold seminars. They're very, they're very um, active in the community in fundraising for uh, various charities and causes. So they'll often hold events here. Over on my right, we're right above a, a stand of wisteria and a herb garden over here. And there's another glimpse of another exhibit. But if we're wasting too much time up here on the walkway, we're not going to get to see all these. So I better get a move on. Can you hear the cicadas? Okay, there's a little bird in the tree. That's a noisy miner up there loving the grevillea flowers. They're so rich in honey. I don't think we're going to get a shot of him though. He's hidden amongst the foliage. And this one is a banksia, another tree that's full of honey-soaked flowers that the birds love. So at this point, we're right next to Lane Cove National Park. Just beyond that fence there, that wire fence, is the National Park itself, which goes down to Lane Cove River. And we're about um, 16 kilometres from the city centre, hence the traffic noises. Okay, we're going to go into this tower. And I'm going to be very slow on the steps because my knees don't think much of steps. But before we go downstairs, here's another view of the garden from up top. This is another one of the exhibits. It's a series of discs suspended from the ceiling. And there's an explainer video sort of playing in the background. This is another one for kids. Underneath the suspended discs are some rock pieces. And the theme of this one is lichen. So it invites the children to have a close look and see how many examples of lichen they can identify. So as we move out of the tower, we need to look back on ourselves basically for the next art piece. And we'll come back and have a look at this gum tree in a moment because it's relevant to installation number six, which is called Scribbly Gum Lace. And on the sign here, it says, do you know what creature writes on the trees behind this work in the National Park? So that artwork is based on this real life tree, the scribbly gum. This is the Australian garden. These are kangaroo paws. They attract small honey eaters. Okay, so around the corner here, we have two more pieces. But this one is called Mystic Kitten. Mm. 
That's Mystic Kitten, and we're going to get a better view from around the other side so we don't have the light in the background. I want you to have a look at this magnificent gum tree, though, because it's just gorgeous. Look at the bark, the colour of the trunk. So when I say we've got natural art blended with human art, it really is the case. Okay, this is, uh, this is not part of the art trail. It's just where they've decided to make a piece of infrastructure look a little bit prettier. Okay, so this one's called The Drop. All right, so let's have a look at the other side of the kittens one. And that there is another Australian native plant called a Xanthoria, colloquially known as a grass tree or kangaroo tail because when it's in flower, it produces a flower spike that looks like that. This is another installation. This one invites you to use your imagination. And imagine that lying beneath the surface of this pond is a seed bank. And to get to the seed bank, you need to immerse yourself into an underground tunnel beneath the pond. Okay, so as we walk up here, we get into what I believe is the summer section of the garden. So it's been planted for shade. And on the wall there is our first dragon. Can you see him? I'm going to try and get a little bit closer, but this one looks a bit shy. Okay, I've decided not to go left because there's a leaf blower. So we're not going to go that way. I really like this part of the garden. It's not what I personally would have in my garden. It's a bit too formal for me, but gee, it's lovely, isn't it? Oh, look, we've got two dragons here posing, one on the grass and one on this pot. Look at you just sitting there sunbaking, huh? You're not bothered at all, are you? He's eyeing me, though. He's keeping an eye on me. How close would he let me get? All right, we'll leave you alone there, mate. He's enjoying the art. Okay, let's see what this one's called. It's kind of like an, an opening flower, isn't it? magnificent bromeliad coming into flower how gorgeous is that I read somewhere the other day that some of them once they flower that's it they're gone they're gone they're done so it's like the final last hurrah isn't it this one's called the way forward And it looks to me like a family, three, three generations perhaps. Oh, this, this is a big guy, this dragon. He's a big one sitting on the sculpture. This is quite a big one. There we go, he even gave me a wink. All right, this one here, I'm going to stand back first of all. It's called Floral Odyssey. Looks like it's made of all sorts of materials, including CDs, felt perhaps.
There's some fabric in there. This one on my right is called Bayangan. I think that's how you pronounce it. I did read the information about this one. Um, apparently it's inspired by the shadow art of um, Indonesian cultures. They're rather lovely, aren't they? Let's try for another angle. Look at these. I don't know what they are. Has anyone... Over here we have another one called Knots of Eden. So it says it's porcelain mixed with malt sugar for pliability. Does that mean it's going to dissolve over time? This one's called My Happy Place. Fiber arts. I love fiber arts. And check this out. Look at that. So Saskia is from the Blue Mountains. The Blue Mountains, of course, two years ago had terrible bushfires along with much of New South Wales. And she works with felt. And this is a tribute to the birds that lost their homes in the bushfires. She says she was inspired when she lost her home in the Blue Mountains after the bushfire and looked up in the air and the birds seemed to also have lost theirs. So this is what inspired this piece. And I think they're absolutely gorgeous. They're almost like the shapes of gum nuts, which are the uh, seed pods on eucalyptus trees. I love the shape of this one. All right, let's go. It's a gorgeous golden bamboo. And this installation is called Gold Leaf. It's called the Cave of Yi. But they've literally turned this into a cave. Look at the ceiling. Over here on the side. I've got all this going on. Okay, if we get around the other side, we'll have a better chance of better lighting. It'll only take a moment to get back over to the um, garden center itself because there's some really interesting plants over there. Now here we've got a fairly advanced creeper which is for sale.
What I'm interested in is the exotics that you may not have seen before. Over here on my left is a section called Rare and Unusual. But before we get to them, look at these. Pitcher plants, flycatchers. And they're nowhere near as big as you expect them to be. They're tiny little things. So I don't know if you can see the flycatcher right there in the middle. I'm going to try. I'm not going to touch it, but you can see compared to my finger just how big the little catcher part is. It's not very big at all. And it comes with this warning. Unless you're a fly, please do not trigger the fly traps as this shortens their life. Here we have various rubber trees and figs. And ferns and acanthus. I love acanthus. Very ancient plant. These are monstera. Really popular indoor plant. I don't know if you have seen those before. They get a massive fruit on them, which people say are edible, but each little segment comes with a little prickle, so I daren't try it. Over here we've got beautiful bird's nest ferns. I love those. And elkhorns. They're the ones you can stick on the side of trees. More bird's nest ferns. They get quite large. And then up here, that's you can see the extent of the garden centre. It's really quite lovely. They run classes here. And there's a glass house over there. I'm just coming over here because I can hear water and I always love the sound of water. It's getting very hot and humid and I'm going to go back to that cafe.